Good morning. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, at the university. I would like to, to thank you in particular, University of Trieste, for inviting me here in, in this lovely city today. This is not the first time for me to, to visit uh, Trieste. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, present this topic uh, uh, about tourism, the connection between tourism, sustainable tourism, mobility, and uh, the priority which are now coming from the uh, European Union uh, related to uh, climate uh, mitigation action and uh, as well uh, sustainable development. Uh, what I would like to present, I, I don't know if the PowerPoint is working, i show you better like this. Voila. Uh, this is completed. Uh, this is just the title. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, capture your attention, which is not easy, because the topic is also quite technical sometimes. But uh, please have a look at the title, Sustainable Tourism Destination Management Plans. Uh, because when we think about sustainability, uh, we always are thinking that it's something uh, theoretical, it's something uh, not tangible, uh, but sustainability uh, has to be linked with the management, and uh, not only with management, but also with measurement and also monitoring. So this is crucial. Otherwise, uh, sustainability doesn't be, uh, it's, it cannot be implemented. So, uh, as I said, the sustainable tourism destination management plan so we are looking now how to, to manage destinations in a sustainable way, but focusing on climate change mitigation and transport, in particular multimodal, because this is the topic of the project Step Up. So, uh, as uh, uh, the lady, the gentle lady said before, Margherita, about introducing my topics, so the index, uh, I, I, would, I would like to present two parts. Uh, otherwise, it would be too boring also to, to talk, to talk, and then in du during these two parts, we will make a, a break, a five minutes break for questions and answers, uh, because it's also interesting to have an interaction from the public, from the audience. Uh, it's not academic, it's more informal uh, uh, participation that I would like to, to present. I also forgot to introduce myself about my experience. Uh, as a lawyer, I, I never worked as a lawyer, but as a specialized in European Union law, I've been also selected by the European Commission for five years as a national expert in DG Grow. I made my experience, uh, great experience in the tourism unit for, uh, from 2012 until 2018. Uh, almost 17. So that's, uh, that's uh, my great experience uh, related to uh, the topic of sustainable management and uh, measurement with uh, the European Tourism Indicator System. I will, look, I will present you later. Have a look at the index. So uh, it's interesting to uh, start with the policy framework and with the uh, international framework. Uh, one on the left side you have international principles and uh, on, the, on the right side the European policy framework which should have in mind the two, the two levels, the level international and the level European. Many people they just heard something about for example the 2013 United Nations agenda, the 17 goals, but they don't know what they are talking about. In, in our case we will see specific goals related to tourism uh, and to transport and climate change. Uh, we have, still following uh, the topic, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Cli Climate Agreement to Fight Climate Change, Manila Declaration and COP24 Katowice Declaration. I will explain what uh, where they are about. And then on the, on the European side, uh, a European action for sustainability, new European consensus on development, a clean planet for all towards a sustainable Europe by 2030. It seems just a list of, of topics, but it's not true because there are content behind and there are principles and guidelines that uh, stakeholders like us, they should use, they should implement in their or daily life. So, uh, just to uh, prepare the ground, <laughs> because uh, we are talking about a very uh, sensitive topic. 
and this is my opinion, my personal opinion, but this is also well shared opinion with my colleagues from all over uh, the world, because I'm also connected as an expert, a sustainable tourism expert, with many, many colleagues from uh, all over the world, from Europe, but also outside Europe. Uh, tourism can entail long-term negative transformations on local economies, societies, resource management, and ecosystems, especially in view of the growing challenges of international arrival of tourists in the world. That's something that we should take uh, care of because we want to promote destinations, we want to attract tourists, but then uh, if we attract tourists and uh, we are only facing the uh, issues of mass tourism without any uh, capacity uh, to uh, uh, somehow to uh, measure, to, to monitor the impact of those mass tourism. So uh, that, uh, that's a problem for the destination, that's a problem for the environment, for the ecosystem. Therefore, therefore we need a well-designed uh, management manage tourism sector to preserve cultural heritage assets and also uh, to uh, somehow to uh, empower host communities and generate trade opportunities and foster peace and inter intercultural understanding. So we need, uh, let's say, a common framework to collect data, knowledge and to capture, aggregate and report the full economic, social, environmental impacts of tourism. That's let's say, the starting point when we think about sustainable destination management. Take care of the environment, take care of the ecosystem, and of course also increasing the local community's development, but in the same time developing framework, common framework to host, uh, to, host to collect data uh, about the impact generated by mass tourism, because there are contradictions. We want to attract tourists, but in the same time, we the, the destination, they have no capacity to, uh, to take care of the, of the impact of the mass tourists. So, uh, this is just to... Uh, uh, repeat, because in, lat in Latin, I, I also studied Latin in the classic school, repetita juvent, so be better to repeat something which is new, and uh, like this we can uh, go out of this room with some ideas in mind, and not just, uh, just the words, you know, some content. We were saying before uh, the international guidelines. Let's see what are those international, international guidelines. Uh, as you can also see, uh, please pay attention about 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. It's a circle. It's a circle with a, a chronology starting from the most uh, uh, recent on, on, the, on the left, and then you go like, like this. So we are not talking about something very old. 2015, it's yesterday. 2018 is just a few minutes ago just to, to know that we are trying now to uh, understand in the same time to, uh, to put in place in our daily work, because I'm sure that you are involved in this project, but you are also working with other issues. And so this is something that as a lawyer, let's say it's important to uh, take uh, care and to consider a, as tool in our hands. 2015, the agenda, the 17 goals. Then we have the Paris Climate Agreement, just one year later. Then we have Manila Declaration about measuring sustainable tourism, a call for action. And then we have the COP Katowice Declaration in on forests for climate change. Why forests? Because also forests, they are impacting a lot. And th there is a deforestation in, in Brazil, in, in many countries, the forests, they are now gone. And that's a problem for the oxygen, for, for generating the, the, and then for not capturing the CO2 emissions. So let's see, that's an overview about the international uh, principles for the global sustainability commitment and climate mitigation. Let's see the European side, another overview about the policy. It's just to repeat what I, I, I presented before. Again, look at the date, 2016, 2016, 18, 18, meaning that what we are now discussing, try to understand, it's very recent. The European Action for Sustainability, the new European consensus on developing our world, our dignity and our future, the clean planet for all, and towards sustainable Europe by 2030. Just one little remark. 
all those, uh, let's say, communication of the European Union are not binding. You know the difference between binding something which is binding, ob 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 uh, it's an obligation, and something which is just a recommendation. All those documents, official documents, published by the European Union, because we are talking about the European policy framework, are not binding. So it's not a regulation behind, there is not a directive, and it's not a legislation. They are just uh, official documents that in a political, technical way, we say communication. Uh, documents which are uh, official, uh, there is a content inside, and it's good to follow this content, but it's, it's, it's more a way uh, like a recommendation. Ah, I would recommend you to do this. I, I'm not obliging you to do this. It's just soft. But it's good to know, because uh, especially for the policy makers, we have a representative, uh, a gentle lady from uh, Francesca, Mrs. Francesca, from, from uh, the, the, region, the region. She has a power, she has a responsibility. And for her, it's important also to have in mind that there are recommendations, not just binding laws. So let's see now, step by step, the content about what I was presenting as an overview. Paris Agreement. How many of you are aware about Paris Agreement? Do you remember? Do you remember when Trump, Mr. Trump, the President of the United States of America, soon after the uh, uh, si signature made by the previous President Obama, he said, I don't care about Paris Agreement. We are United States of America, we don't want to. We can pollute the, the world. We don't, we, we don't agree. So, Paris Agreement, it's a, a, an international framework in this case. Many countries, 55 parties, they signed the convention. The Paris Agreement establishes when, in 2016, again, a few days ago, not a long time ago, uh, a global plan to fight against climate change. And climate change in 2016, that time, it seems quite far away, doesn't, it doesn't affect a lot our uh, ecosystem, which is not true because it's a, an urgent issue today. We see even the young generation, they are protesting. It's, it's a daily problem, not only for the uh, uh, outermost regions in the uh, Pacific Ocean. No, no, it's here. It's uh, uh, next to our border. So, the Paris Agreement established what? For the first time, a global goal with the aim to enhance capacity, climate resilience, and reduce climate vulnerability. Uh, the Paris Agreement builds up on the convention, so that's why the way out the countries, they are uh, somehow formalizing this collaboration, global collaboration, the convention, uh, for the first time brings all nations into a common cause to undertake uh, ambitious efforts to combat climate change and adapt to its effects with enhanced support to assist developing countries to do so. The Paris Agreement's central aim is to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change by keeping a global temperature rise uh, this century well below two degrees. That's the, that's the problem, that's the point below do the, the, the temperature is growing, so that's the problem. Alaska is facing, just a few days ago, I saw on the, on the news, in BBC News, the, the, the water in the Alaska, is, 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 the, the, the ice is, is disappearing, and there is an erosion, a coastal erosion there, so people, they are shocked in Alaska, in the American side of from the Alaska. So meaning that, that that's, that's was the point. We have to uh, make a commitment as countries to put, to, to avoid that the, the, the temperature is growing, so they have to say below two degrees Celsius. That was in 2016. It is happen, happening? I don't think, I don't think so. China is still polluting a lot. India as well, the new developing countries. Anyway, that's, that's just to understand what the Paris Agreement is about. 
and it's interesting to follow also the implementation of the Paris Agreement. Another step uh, um, forward uh, is the one, the Katowice uh, uh, Declaration that uh, was decided, was signed one year in 2018, one year ago. But just to go, voila, to the international framework as well. I was saying uh, the 2030 agenda. How many of us are able to list <laughs> one by one <laughs> the 17 goals, what they are about? Can you raise your hands? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so that's the point. <laughs> that's the point because um, many um, topics are just slogan, even, in, even when politicians, they are talking about this, they are just slogan, they don't spend any minutes, even one minute, five minutes, sitting and reading the content, and to, un to, ref to make a reflection, wow, this is important, how I can make action, consequent action, once that I understand the content. The problem is, uh, maybe some, some people, they just stay at the title, <laughs> 2030 Agenda Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 goals. Good. What are the goals? Um, let me think about. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so anyway, it's not. <laughs> I don't want to um, stress this um, issue, but just to 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 have this picture in mind, and maybe the good way, the smart way to approach the 17 goals is to focus in one, two of them, three, and to go in a deep way to go in vertical, not just horizontal. Uh, I like, uh, I fall in law with the goal 12. <laughs> just, <laughs> this is my case because I'm dealing with measurement and, and uh, monitoring. So in goal 12 is the one who is related to monitoring and, and, and measuring. The 12 is responsible consumption and production. Because uh, 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 bes behind the goal there are the targets. And specific targets are related to specific actions. That's just the overview of the 17 goals. In our case, we will focus in particular in 9 and 13, climate action, and 9, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, because infrastructure is also related to, to transport. Just to let you know. And uh, all the goals are uh, published, so you can have a look. The, 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 the 2030 agenda, it's a huge document, <laughs> but university is the right place where people, they can sit and read and understand and study, I guess. <laughs> anyway, in, in the context, I, I try to summarize because I know one hour, it's not enough. It can be even too much listening if the uh, arguments are new. So that's why I tried to, uh, it was not easy to, pre to prepare this, to select the topics and to make a, a let's say, a, um, a fil rouge, a kind of logical behind, because that's important. Otherwise, you can have a lot of uh, information and then you are confused. Whoa, I don't, how many things? Please, go a step uh, behind and say, what we are talking about, we are still in the framework of international guidelines about what? We are talking about sustainable management plans, that's the way, that's what we want to achieve, and we are focusing in particular on climate mitigation, climate change mitigation, and transport, mob mobility. And uh, in, the same con in the same time, we are trying to understand what is the picture, uh, uh, what is the context, the international guidance, what are the di direction they are gu giving us, what direction. So in the, in the agenda 2030, please remember there are five key principles. Five, it's number five, it's easy, five. Number five, uh, five key principles, which are people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. Interesting. It's even interesting to remember 5P. And uh, the 2030 agenda is a universal, it's a universal, uh, let's say, framework applying to all countries. It set out a comprehensive vision. Vision, we, have, we must be visionary. It's a comprehensive vision of what needs to be achieved 
from a global perspective, because we are still in the global perspective. We are in Trieste today, you are coming from Croatia, we are neighbor, Italy, Croatia, Adriatic Sea is our, uh, let's say, uh, common friend, but uh, we have to look at the global perspective as well. We must be also uh, connected with the global perspective, and uh, we must be aligned with this global perspective. Otherwise, we are doing something very small, very tiny, and the impact will be very tiny, and we will uh, be, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, somehow uh, we will be a victim from other um, effects which we, we if we are not able to to be prepared uh, about these challenges because there are many challenges in front of us so from a global perspective the 17 goals are and targets as I said before 17 goals plus targets uh, will stimulate action over the next 15 years because remember the agenda was published in 2000 15. So, just to remind uh, the, 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 the chronology, not too far, 2015, uh, in areas of critical importance for humanity and planet. As I said before, let's focus on some of the, tar of the goals, not all, not all 17s. Otherwise, it will be complicated to remember. I'm sure that if you go out from this room in uh, about 10 minutes after we, we, we look at this, you will remember what is about 12, 9, 12, and 13, at least. You will remember. Because, as I said, the number 9, SDG 9, is related to build resilience infra infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. In your project, innovation is a one component, is a one big component, innovation. Without innovation, you can have uh, intermodality, mobility, connection. You are using innovation, you are using technologies in your project. So SDG 9 is the one related to your project. But 12 is important because we are talking about measurement, monitoring, destination management plans. So uh, SDG 12 is the one responsible consumption and production which is related to monitoring and measuring. SDG 13, take urgent action to combat the climate change and its impact. Transport is one of the main, uh, let's say, guilt about climate change effects. We will see why. That's why, so let's keep in mind those three about at least our framework, our context of the project. 9, 12, 13, and we know what they're about. I'm sure if we will take a coffee break later, we will discuss about those three goals. I hope so. So, and, um, well, let's go a step, uh, I, I, one little, uh, just a reminder. When you look at the pictures, I took personally the pictures. So some of them are from Europe, some are from outside Europe. This one, for example, this came from Greece. <laughs> That's an, a, a nice <laughs> sunset in Greece, in one island in Greece. So it's just because um, I would like also to make some uh, live, uh, live uh, image. So sustainable transport, as I said, uh, that's the way our now uh, Europe is trying to implement the Agenda 2030 because also European Union is committed to act towards the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the 17 goals. That's one way. I will explain you later, you will see the uh, interaction between European Union activities and policies and the international guidelines. So there are bridges in between, but now you know what type of bridges, because that's uh, difficult to go into the content, to stay into the content. Uh, just about sustainable transport, because it's our topic, we are talking about transport. The EU, European Union, focuses on monitoring progress in strengthening research and development and innovation and fostering sustainable transports. So sustainability, it, it might be your flag in your project. CO2 emissions from new passenger cars in 2017, 118.8 grams of CO2 per kilometer. So this just to, to show you, this is a study made by European Union two years ago, two one and a half years ago, to show 
about transport, what are the, uh, the you see, the um, uh, calculation of CO2 emissions? Collective passenger transport in 2017, 17.1 percentage of total inland passenger per kilometer. So it's the rail and waterways freight transport in 2016, 2033.6 uh, total uh, percentage of total inland freight tone. So just to show uh, about different type of transport, what is the impact and what is the amount of per in percentage of t CO2? So that's important to have in mind. It's an official study ba made by the European Union in 2017. See, the EU focuses on monitoring process related to the implementation of the Agenda 2030, in particular the SDG 9. SDG 9, the one related to transport infrastructure innovation. Voila, the Manila Declaration. People, uh, they think, what is Manila Declaration? Why we are using Manila Declaration? Where is Manila? <laughs> you know where is Manila? Yes, I'm sure. It's in the Philippines. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, uh, you know, there are international organizations, like not only United Nations, but also UNWTO, which is the U United Nations World tourism organization. So UNWTO is, is working together with United Nations, especially for the tourism related issues. So United, UNWTO organized uh, every year uh, international conferences. And this one was on tourism statistics. Uh, the topic measuring sustainable uh, tourism was organized in Manila in 2017, two years ago. And as I said, uh, Without measuring, without monitoring, uh, we, are ca we cannot talk about sustainability. In the same time, there is uh, a kind of uh, overlapping, let's say, uh, uh, between statistic office and different way of measuring, using other type of indicators not recognized within the re national reports or the regional reports of the countries. So therefore, statistic offices are making their new challenges uh, activities uh, in order to stress this importance of measuring, but in the same time, other tools are available. Uh, uh, I will explain later about ATIS, about uh, GSTC criteria, which are less, um, less um, uh, formal, but they are uh, useful as well. So in this case, the UNWTO organized this meeting with this international conference in Manila at what, at what has been decided. In 2017, do you remember that was declared by United UNWTO the International Year of Sustainable uh, Development? And many initiatives have been taken during this 2017 year. The International Year of, I, I've been in Geneva at the end uh, uh, of the year because they organized this final conference in Geneva in Switzerland. It was very interesting. People from all over the world, a representative a mini, uh, at the ministerial level from all over the world, they came. Even the new sec gen of the UNWTO is from Georgia. So he was there in Geneva in, in December 2017. Just to, to stay, to let's, to, to, to have um, a kind of, uh, follow-up of all uh, the initiatives taken during the 2017 years. And uh, so that was international year in 2017. Therefore, Manila Declaration, what uh, is about? A call up on all, ac all actors to facilitate the necessary means and the resources for the development uh, of uh, implementation of uh, monitoring sustainable framework. So that's the, ca the call for action is towards the countries in order to uh, stimulate, to, to, to facilitate this development of a manage, measuring sustainable framework. Uh, because, as I said, uh, it's important to collect data, it's important to fulfill the gaps uh, related to uh, uh, information coming from the territory when we want to measure the impact, uh, in environmental, uh, social, cultural impact. So Manila Declaration is about this in 2017. It's a call for action on measuring sustainable tourism. Then, that's another picture. I took this picture in, uh, in uh, Ireland, in Ireland, uh, Iceland. I was in Iceland during the whale watching. So I saw the, the, the whales also in, in Iceland. 
that's uh, that's uh, it's the COP 2024 uh, uh, Katowice declaration. Katowice is in Poland, and uh, you know every um, six months uh, the European uh, Union presidency is changing. Now we have the current one is Romania. Uh, in last December uh, was the from June to December was Poland the the EU presidency. So during the EU presidency, the um, the, 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 let's say the, all the representative at, at ministerial level they met in uh, uh, Katowice, and they uh, and also they decided uh, to um, organize this conference uh, in order to uh, commit the countries for again for the climate change, focusing on forests. So Katowice in December 2018 uh, was about. Uh, the uh, commitment for uh, the uh, to, to achieve the Paris Agreement for mitigation climate change with uh, um, uh, taking care in somehow of the forest uh, because the forests they play an important role as reservoirs of greenhouse gases. That's the point. And there is a need for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. That was the way and conservation, sustainable management of forest. The um, uh, commitment for all the stakeholders was including cities, regions, businesses, and investors, so all of the stakeholders has to be involved, was to continue their ambitious and commitment in their forestry-related climate actions. So that was the Kratovice Declaration involving not only the ministerial level, the country level, but also region, cities, and businesses, and investors to act on this. Take care of uh, sustainable management of forests, because forests are, co the, uh, they play an important role as reservoirs of greenhouse gases. So, now, as I said before, let's take a little break for questions and answers. Because otherwise, your mind, your brain <laughs> will be <laughs> overlapped of the information. And uh, so, a few minutes, uh, if we may, we may. And also, I don't know what time is it because I have no. Please let me know the time, otherwise, I will. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, until what time I have my speech? 10.30? Ah, well, see, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why. So, a few minutes if in case. If there are not, I can go ahead. But just, just to make a short break for the brain, otherwise also my voice talking, talking. So, please, if you have any question, just raise your hands about what we're saying. It was more or less, uh, what I presented was more or less this uh, overview, let's say, international and uh, European, but there is a, a link between, and the link, uh, I was stressing the point of uh, sustainable management plans, tourism, uh, with uh, focus on, on transport and uh, climate uh, action. So, any questions? We go ahead. <laughs> Okay, okay. And now, and now we go into the part, European part side, um, which is uh, quite relevant for us as European and is much more closer to us. So we should take into account much more those guidelines at European level. Uh, this is a very important communication. As I said, not all of those uh, documents are binding, but are soft documents, communication, recommendation. This communication, 2000, so as a lawyer, I always put the source. That's an official document. You can find it on internet, Google, just you type communication 2016 number 739 final. You will find the document, the, the entire document. And uh, what is about this European action for sustainability? Sustainability as European brand. It's nice, European brand, so sustainability. We take the flag. In 2016, so very recently, EU's commitments to sustainable development. The EU is fully committed 
to be a front runner in implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 and its 17 goals. I'm sure that at least among the 17 goals, three of them, you know <laughs> what are about. The three, at least the three, 9, 12, and 13. <laughs> you know what are about. So the, that's important to see the bridges. We were discussing before about the United uh, Thirty Agenda, its international uh, view, visionary uh, plan. But here we have the commitment at European level. We are Europeans, so we have to be aware about what is g going on. So uh, together with the member states and in line with the principle of subsidiarity, it's important to know the principle of sub subsidiarity because that's the way how the member states and the European Union are in interacting. Sustainable development is an issue of governance and requires to write the right instruments to ensure policy coherence across thematic areas as well as between the EU external action and its other policies. Key actions and governance elements, the Commission launched in 2017 a multi-stakeholder platform with the role uh, to the follow-up and exchange of best practices on SDG implementation across sectors. I would advise you to have a look at this multi-stakeholder platform because you can be also uh, somehow um, engaged in this platform. Uh, and you see at the member states, regional, local and EU level mobilizing expertise of key sectors including tourism, but transport is also there. So have a look, this is a concrete tool, a multi-stakeholder platform uh, launched by the European Union in 2017 about this commitment of sustainability, European action for sustainability. Then, there is also a, a, a consequent uh, action soon after this European uh, uh, Commission communication 2016. In 2017, even the Council you know the difference between the Commission and the Council. So the, com the Council is, is more uh, political level. The Commission is a technical level. They are ex executing the, uh, the activity, uh, the, the, the decision taken by the Council. And the, the Council is, is also a legislative power together with the Parliament. But the Commission uh, can propose uh, uh, legislative uh, um, initiatives but cannot uh, make the final decision for legislation, the Commission. In any case, I would just would like to uh, highlight for you that this uh, sustainability as European brand is becoming also a political commitment, not only a technical commitment, because the Council, one year later, that's made a sustainable European future, that was the, the Council conclusion, uh, to the EU response to the 2012 agenda for sustainable development. The European Council states the urges, that urges that the Commission to elaborate by mid-2018 an implementation strategy with which has been developed, outlining timelines, objectives and concrete measures to reflect the 2030 agenda. So that's the point. That's meaning that we are very fully, fully committed at European level. And we might, might, might know that this is an uh, ongoing uh, process. So uh, then, uh, if you remember when I was making the overview, still in the European side, we have the new European consensus on development of our world, our dignity, our future. Uh, another communication, 2016, principles and values guiding democracy, the rule of law, the universality and indivisibility of human rights, fundamental freedoms, respect for human dignity, the principle of equality and solidarity. So those principles are, con are, are part of this um, new European consensus, uh, uh, let's say, communication of the European Commission. And uh, what uh, I would like to highlight for you, as you see, the EU and its member states will support the design, construction and operation of urban infrastructures that are more resource efficient, support the development of sustainable, interconnected and secure transport networks and other resilient infrastructure to promote growth, trade and investment, enhance joint programming in, developing co in development cooperation. We are in the framework of cooperation because Interreg, Croatia, uh, Italy, is, an int is a cooperation program. It's to foster cooperation between the countries. So all those uh, actions are foreseen also in this communication, new European consensus 
for uh, uh, our world, dignity and future. In particular, I just, uh, the document is quite big, but I was selecting uh, topics which are related to the project. Infrastructure, uh, more uh, resource efficient, uh, sustainable uh, transport networks, joint programming development cooperation, integrated environment and climate, including mitigation, adaptation, and cooperation strategies. So that's everything we are doing. It's it's also supported by uh, official documents. Another picture, that's is in the cathedral of Otranto. That's famous because this is the meaning, this tree is the life, so the tree of life. <laughs> and that's uh, architecture stuff, but it's important also to, to have in mind that that's our dignity and our uh, f the, um, future. So, now, clean planet for all. A European strategic long-term vision for a prosperous, modern, competitive, and climate neutral, ec neutral economy. I'm going to a little faster because I, I see that uh, the time is running. Uh, the urgence to protect the planet, we know. Uh, again, this was the last uh, communication 2018, one year ago. Please, look at this. Climate change is a serious concern for Europeans. Immediate and decisive climate ac action is essential. In particular, now we see transport. That's the link. Transport is responsible for around a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions in the EU, European Union, transport. All transport modes need to contribute to the decarbonization of mobility system. This requires a system-based approach in all modes in the first prong of this approach, just as renewable energy in the previous law and zero emission vehicles. So we, you are making some type of prototype of vehicles like electricity. You are also working on this uh, innovation uh, t um, and in, 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 um, technologies, IC technologies. So a combination of decarbonized, decentralized, and digitalized power, more efficient and sustainable batteries, highly efficient electric power trains, connectivity and autonomous driving offers prospects to decarbonize road transport. So road, also the sea, also the, the sea you are also using the mm, sea connection, the transport by sea. But that's the way that transport is responsible. That's the way See, electrification of sh short sea shipping and island waterways is also an option where the power to weight ra ratio makes is feasible. So that's just to le let you know that it's foreseen in this European strategic long-term vision for a prosperous, modern, competitive and climate neutral economy. W that's the way that we are going. And we have to, take in, we have to be aware about this uh, uh, communication, clean planet for all. And it's one year ago, communication 2018, and transport is responsible for mostly uh, of the quarter of greenhouse gas emission in the European Union. So that's why we have to uh, avoid this and to develop new uh, prototype, new modes of transport. And you are in the good direction, so you can use this as a, a policy framework for your project as well. Then. That's just to show you the climate impact, uh, ch climate change in Europe. Just a, a picture, uh, because we are talking about Adriatic Sea, we are in the Adriatic Sea, so uh, I, I would like to also to present this you know, Mediterranean region, coastal uh, zones and regional seas. So we are facing this, these problems. And just to see, uh, it's a list of, 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 of issues, uh, challenges, for the Mediterranean region, like uh, increasing risk of droughts, increasing by, uh, risk of biodiversity loss. So there are a lot of challenges, a lot of issues there for the climate change impacts in Europe. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's important to know, it's important to be aware, it's important to not just to be aware, but also to know what are the solutions. And what I'm trying to present to you is uh, a political and institutional framework to, to guide, to guide the stakeholders. But many stakeholders, they are not aware. So let's start to learn. And uh, just to show the climate change impact then, uh, again, I was thinking that short break, but we don't have time for the short break. Let's go ahead. <laughs> 
So the second part, I, I started to, to, to run a little bit. Um, coastal and maritime, now we go more in, in the focusing uh, uh, area of the, of the strategies. Uh, EU strategies and interregional cooperation and EU and international destination management tools. So um, again, uh, try to be in, in line with the strategies, European strategies. What are the most closing strategy for uh, interreg project? Coastal and maritime tourism for more growth and jobs is one strategy, the European Union. A EOSER, today and tomorrow there is in parallel the EOSER the forum, EOSER forum in Budva in Montenegro. And uh, this is the first time that I'm not going because I, I choose to come here, not to go there. But uh, since the first uh, edition of EOSER forum, I, I've been there, I, I attended. And uh, the blue economy uh, in the Mediterranean, the blue growth. So, and then and then about uh, the tools, about the destination management tools, the international one, Global Sustainable Tourism Council criteria, and ATIS, the one that I've, I've been the responsible. People, they still call me ATIS mother. People, they, they remind me <laughs> ATIS mother because I was the responsible. So, the, uh, pardon. Uh, this is uh, the communication uh, of the strategy, as I said, the, the um, uh, coastal and maritime tourism strategy, communication 2014. Just to give you an idea, of course, you are uh, uh, free to, to look at the document, uh, the, the action plan, but what is about this communication? To boost competitiveness and sustainability, that's the main uh, objective. Uh, unlock the potential for growth and jobs uh, of coastal and maritime, because there is a potential for more growth and jobs on coastal and maritime uh, um, uh, destinations. So there are four pillars and 14 actions uh, at EU level. In particular, the four pillars are related to the stimulated performance and competitiveness, promoting skills and innovation, strengthening sustainability, maximize available EU funding. I don't want to go into details, but this implementation of the action plan is still ongoing, in particular for the cruise sector, the nautical tourism. So those are the action mass, uh, most, uh, uh, let's say, updated in the framework of this strategy, coastal and maritime tourist strategy, but also the, uh, for sustainability, also the, uh, the action related to the uh, directive for, um, what's the name, uh, I don't remember now, there is a specific directive for the sustainability within coastal maritime, but it's, it's, uh, it's under implementation and in particular sustainability and uh, the cruise uh, and nautical are the most, uh, uh, let's say, updated one. Then, that's the strategy, uh, I was saying, EUSER for the Adriatic and Union region. So, you see the countries involved, you see the regions involved. In Italy, uh, not all the, the regions are uh, part of EUSER, and uh, it was a political decision to involve also regions like Umbria. It's not an Adriatic, uh <laughs> that doesn't have the Adriatic in front, but Umbria has been involved, or Sicily. <laughs> So just, it was a political decision. Eh, or Lombardia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> exactly, let's say. Indeed, indeed, those regions are not very, very engaged, let's say. They are not quite, because they don't see the reason to be fully engaged. So, and then in, in the other countries, all the regions, it's not, it was not a regional decision, but just all country. Are, are a part of EUSA. So just to show you, uh, for example, Croatia, all the all the all the Croatia, Greece, all the all the all the country. Only Italy, of course, they made this, but with this strange uh, definition. Of anyway, so the pillars in the in the strategy EUSA, there are four pillars. You know. And you know which one is more related to your project? The pillar two, connected the region. Uh, plus, so there are the four pillars, uh, blue growth, connecting the region, environmental equality, and uh, quality and sustainable tourism, the one that I have been involved. But uh, there are also cross-cutting aspects like capacity building, including communication, research and innovation, SME, deve SME development. Those are, this is uh, EUSER, uh, the, let's say, the how is built the strategy with the, his, his action plans. 
And uh, those are uh, the topics within uh, each pillar, in particular pillar one, uh, connecting the region, uh, pillar two, pardon, I, I made a mistake. It's pillar two, connecting the region, maritime transport, intermodal connection to the uh, interland and uh, energy networks. Those are within the topics, the actions. So it's, it's the action plan is foreseen in this way. The topics, the actions to be taken within the action plan, and those are the type of action. Maritime transport, and you are there, improving, upgrading road, uh, see, and the rail infrastructure linking ports to the interland port traffic management system. So you are fully there, you are fully <laughs> involved in this, in this EUSER strategy for the pillar two, connecting the region. Uh, of course, there is also uh, the one uh, uh, which I, I was presenting, sustainable tourism, because we are trying to, to see the bridges between transport and tourism. Sustainable tourism, diversified tourism offer, uh, this is uh, the, the action, uh, products and services, and sustainable and responsible tourism management. The two topics and plus the actions, but there are also more actions. I didn't want to bother you with all the actions. But so that's uh, just to give you an idea about the pillar for sustainable tourism, the topics plus the actions. And that's EOSER. But then we have also key challenges between the coastal maritime tourism strategy, because they are not separated, and EOSER. I try to make this uh, linkage putting ends together, fully integrate with ongoing initiatives, sub-regional dialogues, uh, improving data information using clustering and cooperation structures, maritime security, uh, ensure safe and secure transport, trade, coastal development, also important for tourism. So just to see uh, the interconnection between the two strategies. And uh, remember, there are also the similar uh, uh, approval was in 2014 for both. The launch of EOSER was formally launched in 2014, the same for the coastal and maritime tourism strategy, 2014, so parallel also in the timing. Then, uh, the blue growth, uh, the blue economy uh, is also important, that's another topic. Don't please have in mind that you are also linked with the, the blue economy in blue growth. This is in particular for the Mediterranean region. And uh, you see again, uh, those are the three, the, the, there's another communication 2017, uh, initiative for the sustainable development of the blue economy in the Mediterranean. Again, for the key words for us are sustainability, of course, plus uh, tourism, plus transport, plus climate change. So the key, key words, we are interconnecting all of them in the same framework. Three main goals, safer and more secure maritime space, smart and resilient blue economy, better governance of the sea. And you see here in the picture, transport, see the impact of and shipbuilding. See, that's just to give you an idea, coastal tourism. So it's, uh, and then of course, we, we the, the, the objective is to promoting sustainable blue growth and jobs and preserving ecosystem and biodiversity. That's the point. Uh, in the Mediterranean region. So we have to be very, very aware about this and take it care. So um, then, uh, done, because I know that we go through the, now the international, uh, we go to the more concrete uh, part and then, uh, and then I guess we are at the end almost. The international monitoring tool, uh, Global Sustainable Tourism Council. I don't know if you are, uh, if you heard about this GSTC criteria. Some destinations, they are very, very uh, keen to implement those criteria. And they are also using uh, both international criteria and European, like with ATIS. In this case, so Global Sustainable Tourism Council uh, was formally constituted in 2010 and uh, Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria and the Indicators in 2014-15. So those are the, let's say, the section, the four sections of this uh, GSTC criteria for destinations. Demonstrate effective sustainable management, maximizing economic benefits to the host local community and minimize negative impacts, maximize benefits, um, maximize benefits of to communities, visitors and culture, and uh, maximize benefits to the environment and minimize negative impacts. 
So environmental issues, then you, you have communities and, ca and visitors, and then you have uh, economic benefits and sustainable management. So four sections, that's GSTC criteria. The, this picture, I guess, came from also Iceland. Uh, then, that's to go more into details about the one of the criteria li uh, related to transport, the low impact transportation criteria D12 uh, within this GSTC. Criteria, the destination has a system to increase, so to monitor, because we are discussing before about manage management plans. We have to monitor, we have to keep data, to collect data, how? How can we do it? Of course, we can use uh, su surveys. Uh, we can make uh, 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 specific surveys using uh, indicators to collect information from uh, different stakeholders. This is the case of ITIS, but it's the same for GSTC through surveys. So, criteria is destination as a system to increase the use of low impact transportation, including public uh, transportation and active transportation. Uh, how you can you know this? You have to distribute surveys and then you can have a kind of uh, average of, of, the, of the, uh, this, the system, if it's in place or not. Indicators, program to increase the use of low impact transportation, program to make sites of visitor interest more accessible to active transportation. This is walking or cycling, for example. The case of uh, uh, GSTC uh, criteria D12 for low impact transportation. And then uh, that's ATIS, uh, the European Tourism Indicator System, that's uh, the, the, the tool. Uh, it was uh, foreseen in the communication 352-2010, Action 11, as a legal basis. Uh, what is it? It is a management tool, uh, and uh, it's used by destinations for free on voluntary basis is based on 43 core indicators plus a set of supplementary indicators and it's a not a certification scheme so that's the case uh, when uh, destination are using uh, this tool they don't get any certification at the end of the story they just work for their uh, own improvement but they, they don't get a certification they they if they want to get a certification they go you they can use emas they can use other certification or official uh, lab labels in place so uh, that's the toolkit and then in particular for the um, uh, indicators related to transport, there is also a section, uh, criteria D1, reducing transport impact. Also, ATIS is based in four sections, destination management, econo economic value, social and cultural impact, environmental impact. Within the section D, environmental impact, we have these indicators, uh, D11, D12, D13, related to transport. And in this case, we can calculate the average, we can calculate in percentage, uh, how, uh, for example, percentage uh, there is a mistake tourist and same day visitors using local soft mobility public transport services to get around average travel by tourists and same day visitors to home to destination, percentage of tourists and same day visitors from home to the destination. So, just to have a criteria about reducing transport impact in the destination, and then. For climate change uh, measurement, we have also uh, a criteria in uh, the GSTC, uh, Global Sustainable Tourism, uh, criteria D4, in particular climate change in ATIS, criteria D2, uh, where we want to understand the percentage of tourism enterprises involved in climate change mitigation schemes, such as uh, CO2 offset, low energy systems, adaptation responses and actions, and percentage of tourism accommodation and attraction infrastructure located in vulnerable zones. For example, in the mountains, uh, uh, you see how many people they are dying because of the snow and the, we say avalanche. So uh, it's, it, it's uh, also caused by climate change action. Vulnerable, it's, it can be considered a vulnerable zone. Uh, then we are almost approaching the end. So this is just to show you at its destinations by type. Uh, coastal, uh, uh, mountain, uh, rural, uh, big cities, small villages, so that's the type of destinations in Europe. Uh, 
some successful experiences of at this destination, for example, from visit to South Sardinia, which is an island, and also for the seven transnational cultural routes certified by the Council of Europe. I made also this pilot uh, uh, implementation for seven, like Via Francigena, Itervitis, using uh, ATIS as a tool for, the, for measuring, in particular, the cultural impact, because they are cultural routes. Then, uh, that was uh, the ceremony, the award ceremony. I still was uh, in the commission that time, that's me, and that this is uh, the one responsible of the, uh, the man uh, from the GSTC criteria, uh, Mr. Cabrini, he is the, the head of uh, the director of the GSTC Council criteria, GST Global Sustainable Tools in Council criteria. So, and that was during the ATIS award ceremony because um, several destinations has been awarded by the European Commission in 2016 because they were well performing with the ATIS. Uh, that's just the example of the um, visit South Sardinia. They were using this toolkit. They were also using uh, the. Um, the surveys, but they had the problem with the SMEs to collect the data because SMEs sometimes they are not able to provide information. They are so busy, so that's a weak part, let's say, when you are to collect information from destinations. But in the same time, they saw uh, the advantage, the benefit in using these monitoring tools because uh, they, they improved the sustainability communication, they improved also the policies, uh, sustainability policies and uh, marketing strategic uh, uh, using thanks to this uh, management tool. So then, uh, question and answer, I'm sure you won't, no, because we have, uh, I don't know if you want to uh, make some questions. Uh, how much time we have? <laughs> so let's go to the end and then we, in case there are, so just uh, because I like to conclude with some sentences and uh, the pictures, have a look at the pictures because those pictures are people hugging the, each other. I took those pictures in Tbilisi, in Georgia, uh, two, three years ago. And uh, so it's, uh, it's nice um, to see the people hugging because cooperation is also hugging people. It's people to people. It's a, a, it's a warm uh, uh, hugging. So alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. That's the sentence. And also using uh, Kennedy sentence, things do not happen. Things are made to happen. So <laughs> that's the way that we have to approach the project and not only thinking beyond the project, not just within the project. So uh, the engagement of public-private partnership and international, interregional and intersectoral cooperation is fundamental uh, to turn vision into reality. That's just to, to know. And by developing new green business eco-friendly models with a circular interdisciplinary and intersectoral approach, tourism, culture, environmental, transport, mobility, waste management, all together, intersectoral approach, managing sustainable destinations with the ability to measure, I want to stress this ability to measure, uh, the tourism impact on climate mitigation is not a trend, is the unique way to create a responsible and balanced ecosystem for the planet and to respect the social cultural dimension of the territories. That's it. That's a thank you for your attention. I'm sorry if I was talking too much. But uh, I hope uh, at least you go out of this room with some ideas <laughs> and some content. Thank you very much.